All right, so I did like a case that's like very local. I mean, um, I talked to Dr. Madison about the case and like he really didn't know much about it. Neither did I. Um, um, this is kind of like a crisis um, media relations case. Um, and it's like centered around the American Cancer Society. Um, and the event is called the um, Bowtie Experience. Um, so the coronavirus, as everybody know, like it changed a lot. Um, it affected a lot of lives and a lot of businesses. Um, if you don't know about the uh, American Cancer Society, it is a nationwide and community-based volunteer, voluntary uh, health organization that's dedicated to uh, eliminating cancer. Um, so we have like our own chapter of that here or society here. Um, and it's, it basically hosts like um, an upper echelon um, gala that's called the Bowtie Experience. Um, if you're not familiar with a gala or you don't know what it is, um, it's a formal event featuring um, entertainment and music, usually intended to raise money uh, for a benefit or a cause. Um, the Bowtie Experience allows everyone in the community and organization to come together for the cause. Uh, for this year's event, due to COVID, uh, they had to change it up. Um, and, you know, it's basically like small, to, to, to describe it, it's small, like intimate get togethers. Um, and this year it had to be like a small, you know, and they had to basically host it on, and stream it on Facebook Live. Um, and the event like shows like pre and post entertainment along with, you know, um, online auctioning and bidding. All right, so um, I interviewed uh, Mr. Billy Hobbs. Um, I like to call him Mr. Big Shot every time I see him. Um, he's basically Mr. BWPR, uh, which he has a company here. Um, uh, I mean, he's basically the owner, started off when he was young, but um, they, I, I call it ACL, um, which is the Lafayette uh, American Cancer Society here. They partnered up with him and his firm to create this event this year. Um, so due, like I said, due to the pandemic, um, basically adjustments had to be made. Um, I already said all that. Um, <laughs> so basically, you know, they had this trend. They got this trend now to where, you know, most online auctioning and bidding um, happens really, you know, through like, I don't know, live streaming. So, you know, one thing that they tried to look up was, you know, they they understood that Facebook Live had, you know, something like to scream and, you know, most people are on Facebook. So um, um, they basically, he told me, Mr. Hobbs told me that they basically had um, two months to pull everything together um, to be a success. Um, and he told me, he also told me that for them, this was their first virtual event because usually the event is in person. So it's like something you can actually like put your clothes on, like go to like in person. You see a lot of people, but thanks to COVID, couldn't do it this year. So we had to do it um, virtually. Um, so, so basically the goals and objectives, um, they wanted to produce a campaign with creative and strategic goals and objectives. Um, I mean, Mr. Hobbs, he he had he really understood that you know he had to break down like the non-traditional um, barriers um, when the old rules of engagement didn't apply. So basically, what I'm saying is, you know, basically he had to take what what he knew from them having an event in person and basically bring it try to bring some of that stuff to, you know, virtual. So some of his main goals was to raise 80,000. That was a real low. He told me that was a real, real low number because he wasn't expecting that many donations. Um, um, to reach 100 viewers over, uh, overall, to produce and edit um, the film for 15 honorees. Um, I'm going to get more into that, and I'm going to explain that later. Um, 
secure five to seven local media outlets for the event. And he told me to, to overall have a successful event. Okay. Um, the, the strategy, um, basically the local chapter, um, basically partnered up with him to, I mean, basically come up, they first met and when they first met, they came up with the questions, what would be the most engaging? Um, how can we engage people even in a non-personal setting? How can someone still get the same feeling for the event, even though it's virtual? Um, they basically tried to look at different areas of opportunity. Um, so like if this meant like, like doing press releases, um, I mean, doing like certain posts on Facebook, you know, to try to gain that attention and gain that, you know, momentum into the event. Um, so basically, um, they had a host. Um, it was Billy, one of Billy's friends. Um, he he really liked the demand. Um, <laughs> that, that's what he told me. Um, and basically, they started off the production with a video of a mini group introduction um, of the honorees. And I'm going to show y'all. Hopefully I get done in time. But um, they also had advertisements throughout, like basically advocating sponsors and stuff like certain sponsors and, you know, donations and stuff. Um, and he also said that they connected um, them with um, the restaurant, the local restaurant restaurant called Spoonbill and Spoonbill came up with the specialty cocktail for the event and it was just for that night and it was called the lavender bow tie um so basically the evaluation um they basically had they um, put their focus on like things like social media analytics media relations stories and you know general and basically how it went um he said that they had a, a very, very successful event. They completed all their goals. They raised 96,000 um, worth of donations. As you can see, this was like one of the posts after the event. Um, and he told me that one of the main takeaways for me being a, a upcoming um, PR professional that you gotta pivot. Like his word was like, you gotta pivot. You gotta understand how to pivot. Um, and he said, if if it didn't have engagement um, and, you know, they wouldn't have used some techniques that they use. I, I didn't get all of them, but um, it, it would have definitely failed. Um, and I and I say that this was a great, uh, six, it was a great and successful combination of crisis communication as well as media relations campaign because of uh, how BWPR used the setbacks to their advantage and get the job done while exceeding expectations.